Hello and welcome to another video on Stay On Target. So if you don't know, Doctor Who magazine is running a poll of all the stories for the 60th anniversary of the show. And on their website you can now mark out of 10 all of the stories from the 60s. So I thought, I've watched all the stories from the 60s. I was originally planning to watch every story ever, but I got to the second season of the John Pertwee era and kind of lost interest because, I don't know, the unit era didn't really appeal to me. But like I say, I have watched every story from the 60s, so you can watch me give my thoughts on each one of them now. Okay, so we're starting off with 100,000 BC, a.k.a. Unearthly Child. Strange that they choose to list the title under its less used one. But they have included Unearthly Child, so we do know which one it is. Unearthly Child. Hmm. The first episode is great. Most people can agree on that. But episodes 2, 3 and 4, they just fall completely flat for me. And we're rating out of 10. Hmm. The first episode would be like a 9 or an 8 out of 10, definitely. But we've got three others that are god-awful. They're absolutely dreadful. So... I think I will give it a 4 out of 10. And I think that's being very generous, seeing as the first episode only makes up a quarter of the story. The cliffhanger at the end too, with the radiation danger, is also very well known. But again, that can't redeem a lacklustre story. Then we have The Mutants, aka The Daleks. Obviously, written by Terry Nation, it was the debut of the Daleks, and probably what saved the show, because the first serial wasn't very popular. But the Daleks... I've, I've seen the statistics, and Unearthly Child had like 5 million viewers, whereas the Daleks, by episode 6 and 7, it was peaking at around 10.4, which is absolutely crazy to have that much growth so quickly. However... While the Daleks are good, I don't think the the plot is particularly amazing. The set design, all the design is great. The claustrophobic city, the scary forest, all of the costumes and the Dalek designs themselves are very good. But the plot, hmm. The Doctor is written so unlikable. He pretends to run out of Mercury just so he can go and look at the city and inadvertently puts the whole crew in danger. And it's definitely too long. As With five episodes, I reckon it would be much better. But as it is with seven, I'm going to have to give it only a six out of ten. Which is probably a lot less than a lot of people will give it. But, you know, it's my opinion, not yours. And I don't really like the Daleks as much as other people. Inside the Spaceship, a.k.a. The Edge of Destruction... It's only two episodes, written by David Whittaker, and it was more filler because they had two episodes left of their original 13-episode contract. So he wrote some filler, set entirely inside the TARDIS, with no, no antagonists at all, it's just the TARDIS crew. And there's that weird scene where Susan stabs the chair with a pair of scissors. I've read the Target novelization made it grow on me more, because it's a character piece. And the characters are written pretty well, apart from when Susan goes a bit mad. Not the greatest thing ever. And it, 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 even though it's, although it's only two episodes long and it's, a bit, it's still a bit slow to watch, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Marco Polo. Our first missing story. Seven episodes long, written by John Lucarotti. The first time I watched it, I just listened to the audio and I found it a bit difficult to see what's going on. But then I got the Target novelization and read that and the plot became a lot clearer and I absolutely loved the Target novelization. So I watched the Loose Cannon reconstruction of the story and yeah, it was much better than my first listening. It's just, it's so unlike anything else, like after the first season. Because they, they're constantly on a journey. 8 out of 10. But yeah, they're constantly on a journey. 
and like the locations change every week. They don't. They didn't really do the adventure seasons in later years, like the Keys of Marinus and stuff, where they're going on a journey and it's stuff that happens along the way. And Mark Eden's casting as Marco Polo is absolutely perfect. Then we have the Keys of Marinus, or I don't like it. It's an adventure like Marco Polo, but I don't know. It really, hmm. The first few episodes are kind of promising, and it's set up pretty well in the first episode. And you get that beautiful shot of Moral Tardis landing on Marinus. But then, by episode five and six, it's devolved into like a court case and a murder mystery, which isn't very exciting at all. I'm going to have to give it a uh, 4 out of 10 as well, like an unearthly child. The Aztec is the second historical after Marco Polo. Actually, I guess an unearthly child is technically a historical. But the second proper historical after Marco Polo, also written by John Lucarotti. It was only four episodes long this time. I didn't really like the sets. So I thought they were very clearly just painted things, but... The plot is solid throughout, and it's it's very intense. Like you you can believe that all of the Tardis crew are going to be killed. Is it as good as Marco Polo though? Not really. I'll give it a seven out of ten. Although the famous speech from the Doctor, you can't rewrite history. Not one line. That is one of the greatest moments of season one. And then the sensor rights. Hmm. What do I think of the sensor rights? I think it's underrated. I enjoyed it a lot more than most people. I think the design of the sensor rights themselves is very good. Six episodes long, I think, is a bit too much, but four episodes would have definitely have been too little. Susan gets some character development. She suddenly has telepathy, which is nice to see. And the fact that there's there's no real villain, like some of the sensor rights are bad and plotting against the Doctor, but really they're just scared. It's very interesting. Written by Peter R. Newman, who didn't write anything else for the show. I'm going to be controversial and give it an 8 out of 10. Higher than the Aztecs, the same as Marco Polo. And the final story of season one is The Reign of Terror. What do I think of The Reign of Terror? I think it's not great. It's it's just too long. Six episodes. No. I'm not sure it would even have been that good as a four-parter. Target novelization is great, mostly because it's by Ian Marta. So that raises it a bit, in my opinion. But I'm going to have to give it probably a five. Even just for... The Doctor's magnificent costume when he's impersonating one of the government people. I'm not sure what it's called. I, I watched these stories like a year and a half ago and I only rewatched a few of them. Planet of Giants. Hmm. I've seen the reconstruction like from the scripts making it four episodes, which is much better because the three episodes has so much missing material but I didn't enjoy it that much although the premise is very good I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 tedious milkshake please don't crucify me the Dalek invasion of earth averaged of 12 million viewers it picked the show up again because basically in the 60s how it worked was you'd be coasting along with the viewing figures, then a Dalek story and everything would jump up and then it would just slowly go back down until the next Dalek story boosted the viewing figures again. But the Dalek Invasion of Earth is a great improvement on the Daleks. I think I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, even just for the scenes of the Daleks going around the ruined London. Well, not ruined, but you know what I mean. Those shots of the Daleks on... London Bridge and things. 
The Rescue had even higher viewing figures than The Dark Invasion of Earth. It was only two episodes long, but I was introducing Classic Talk 2 to my friend and we actually started with The Rescue and then watched The Romans because I thought The Romans is great and The Rescue sets it up quite nicely because you have the new companion, Vicky. I'm going to give The Rescue a 7 out of 10. And then The Romans. Four episodes written by legendary Dennis Spooner. It's great. It's full-on comedy. Some of the bits haven't aged particularly well, but all in all, it's amazing. It's probably going to be one of my only 10 out of 10s in this video. I love it so much. The Web Planets. Highest viewing figures on Doctor Who for many years until it was beat by The Ark in Space, Episode 4. It was hyped up so much by the BBC, but we all know where this is going. Horrendous. 1 out of 10? I mean, the plot's not bad. 2 out of 10. And that is me being generous. Crusade is yet another pure historical but it never appealed to me as much as the other one's good. I always found it a bit dull. It's by David Whittaker. Hmm. And obviously it was one of the three stories originally novelised in the 1960s by Frederick Muller Limited. Hmm, what should I give it? Four. What will I give another thing? I give The Reign of Terror five. I'd say The Crusade is a bit more duller than The Reign of Terror. So four out of ten. The Space Museum starts off incredibly promisingly, but it just kind of devolves into a Rebels versus Dictator skirmish. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which is probably, probably a bit controversial, saying that the Space Museum is like significantly better than the Crusade. But I think that just for the, just for the premise alone and the cliffhanger of Episode 1, it's solid. The Chase. The Chase is a very weird one. Daleks, the Daleks are back. But it's like trying to do a Romans comedy. In a, the Daleks have a time machine and they're chasing the TARDIS throughout space and time. I hated it when I first watched it. But I rewatched it and thought, mm, it's better than I thought. I will give this one a 5 out of 10. The Time Meddler. Where to begin with this one? The Time Meddler. I'm trying to think, is there anything bad about it? The fight choreography between the Vikings and the Saxons. Probably the only dodgy part. So I'll give it a 9 out of 10. The Meddling Monk is one of the best characters ever. Yeah, so that concludes Season 2. Moving on to Season 3, we have Galaxy 4. Galaxy 4, what shall I give that? I've got the animation of it. I don't, I agree with Josh Nares. I don't think the an animation of it is as good as the people who did Evil of the Daleks and stuff. But it's solid, it works. I watch in black and white because I don't like the colours much. I don't like how much they've changed the real spaceship. And the plot itself is a bit basic. It's just trying to tell, don't judge a book by its cover. But all in all, it's pretty good. The, the planet set looks a bit rubbish. It's just painted cardboard. But 7 out of 10, I think, is fair. And then one episode... Just Mission to the Unknown. What do I think of that? Hmm, that's the hard one. Didn't have the Doctor or his companions. Instead, the lead was taken by Mark Corey, played by Edward D'Souza. Written by Terry Nation. It was, it was kind of like them catching up with an extra episode where they cut from Planet of Giants. And the score is wonderful. I know it's just stock, mu stock music, but... Like at the beginning, with the violins gradually going up. The YouTube channel All A Load Of Who Ha has done, done like a cover of it in his season three music video. And it's great. 
that might have to be a 10 out of 10 because I can't think of anything wrong with it. The Varga plants, the Daleks, all the menacing alien delegates. Very good. And the Myth Makers. Hmm. The Myth Makers. As you know, I have the Target book cover in like a poster of it that you can buy off the Andrew Skillet website and I've got that framed and signed by him because I love the Target novelisation of it so much and it has such a good cover. But the actual story, the Target novelisation makes it better I reckon but a 7 out of 10 is definitely in order. Yeah, 7 out of 10. I think that's fair. It was the last story featuring Vicky and she didn't have much character development and they just she just suddenly fell in love it wasn't like she slowly fell in love throughout the story it was just like at the end she just announced she was in love with this guy and the doctor took Katarina instead with a wounded Stephen which led into the Daleks master plan an epic space opera spanning 12 episodes i don't think it needed to be that long which is why i'm giving it an 8 out of 10 I know in Josh Schnez's Big Doctor Who poll, it was ranked the best William Hartnell story, but I don't know, it's just too long. If they'd made it ten episodes and cut out The Feast of Stephen, which was garbage, and a bit of the one, you know, it's the episode after The Feast of Stephen, Volcano, where they land on a cricket pitch and you just hear the cricket announcements going on about it for five or ten minutes that that didn't need to be there yeah eight out of ten the concept alone is thrilling and then the massacre of saint bartholomew's eve probably the most missing doctor who story ever what do i mean by that well the episodes are missing we have the audio but there's no telly snaps and very few pictures from the production survive i don't really remember much about it I remember there's quite an air of mystery about the Doctor and his doppelganger, the Abbots. I will give it a 4 out of 10, similar to the Crusade. Simply just for introducing Dodo, who I don't think anyone likes. The Ark is one of my all-time favourite William Hartnell stories. You'll probably think I'm mad, and I probably am, but there you go. Target novelisation is even better because it expands on the concept. But it's just almost perfect. Actually, no. I'll go for it. It is perfect. 10 out of 10. And then the Celestial Toymaker. Hmm. I, people want it to be recovered, and I'm like, I don't really care if it's recovered or not, because the loose cannon reconstruction is so good. It's just them playing games for ages. I've I've seen the yeah, the loose cannon reconstruction. Also, there's a YouTuber called Dino Puff who's slowly animating it, and they're some of the best fan animations on YouTube. Uh, three out of ten. I don't like the story much. Well, the final cliffhanger where the Doctor breaks his tooth on some sweets from the toy maker. It's hilarious. The gunfighters hate it. Four out of ten. The music refuses to get out of my head, no matter how much I try not to think about it. And then The Savages by Ian Stewart Black. Underrated, not much talked about. I think I'll give it an 8 out of 10, just for the science fiction concepts and things. Very nice. And then Ian Stewart Black also wrote the next story, The War Machines. It's solid, but... I wouldn't say it's incredible. I would give it a 7 out of 10. It's nice to have the whole story, though. It's kind of... When you're watching season 3 and there's so many missing stories, it's kind of a treat to have one that still survives. The Smugglers. I love The Smugglers. No one ever talks about it, but I'll give it a 9 out of 10 because, you know, you got all the sensor clips, all the best parts, all the action where... Cherub's throwing his knife into Joe Longfoot's back and things. Very cool. And it was the first proper story with Ben and Polly. 
and then the tenth planet. What, I mean, in concept, it should be amazing. The first regeneration, the debut of the Cybermen, the first base under siege, base under siege story, but it didn't turn out that great. It could have been so much more. But for those things alone, it gets a solid 7 out of 10. So that was the William Hartnell era. Uh, for the second half of this video, we shall move on to the Patrick Troughton episodes or stories. Power of the Daleks. Perfection, 10 out of 10. Need I say any more? The original animation was a bit dodgy, but then they went back and fixed it. And it's very good, although I wish they hadn't cut out the bit where he's playing his recorder. The Highlanders. The Highlanders was a pain to watch because for some reason their loose cannon reconstruction of it isn't on uh, their daily motion. So I had to find a different one which had the audio with the narration instead of just the original audio. It was right. Introduction of Jamie who would be in every subsequent Troughton story. That's going to be a 5 out of 10 for a pretty dull historical the Underwater Menace. It's just over the top in every way possible. Professor Zaroff is completely mad. The fish people look ridiculous. And that scene where the Doctor blows pepper into Zaroff's face to stop him is great. Six. Yeah, six out of ten I think is fair. Then we move on to the Moon Base, which I believe to be the pinnacle of the Base Under Siege format. The Cybermen are so creepy in this story, and Jamie is rambling about the Phantom Piper. I will give it an 8 out of 10. Also, it was just lovely to see so many Cybermen, because they made like 10 or 12 costumes for it. It didn't feel like, you know, in the wheel in space where there's two Cybermen and they're trying to make it look like they have more. The Macro Terror. Probably the best Doctor Who animation. But the original story is good. I feel like it probably wouldn't have looked as impressive as it did on the animation. It's one of the few times I think animation actually made a story better than it would have originally been. Because we have that clip where Ben and Polly are fighting the macro. And it's not really moving. They're like pretending it's attacking them. And it's just kind of sat there. But it's going to have to be a 9 out of 10. Because I've watched the animation... It's top-notch. Then the Facious Ones. You'd probably expect it to be my favourite story because I have that Chameleon Tours hoodie. But six parts, once again, as with many six-parters, it's too long. Six out of ten. And then the Evil of the Daleks. I think lots of people think it's incredible. Uh, Mr Tardis thinks it's awful. And I'm somewhere in the middle. It's good at the beginning. It's good. It's incredible at the end. But drags in the middle. It's going to have to be a 6 out of 10 from me. Which will probably result in me being burnt at the stake by diverted fans. But what are you going to do? Tomb of the Cybermen. The first classic story I ever watched. And I think... It's a 9 out of 10. It's near perfection. The set of the Cyber Tomb, it's like 30 foot high. I don't know how they ever made that. It's great. And then we have the abominable... Sorry, I can't say this. The abominable, the abominable snowmen. The debut of the Yeti, but I think it's overrated like Evil of the Daleks. But it's worse than Evil of the Daleks. I'm going to have to give it a 5 out of 10. I haven't seen the new animation, but it looks to be more in the style of the Fury from the Deep animation, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And then the Ice Warriors, the debut of another well-known villain. But like how the Web of Fear is a massive step up from the Abominable Snowmen, the Seeds of Death is a massive step up from the Ice Warriors. And six parts, too long. Going to have to give it a four out of ten. The Enemy of the World with the Doctor's doppelganger, Salamander. Hmm. 
It's hard. People used to think it was rubbish, and then they recovered it and realised how good it was. The first episode is incredible. And the fight at the end, how, how did they manage to make it look so convincing that Salamander and the Doctor were both fighting when they were both played by one person? Eh, <laughs> 7 out of 10. The Web of Fear with the Yetis in the London Underground. It's incredible. What shall I give it? 9, 8. Yeah, 8. Just because we don't have the third episode. How how did they manage to lose the third episode once they've recovered it? So annoying. And of course they, they managed they managed to get the Enemy of the World episode two, which they already had, but they managed to lose the Web of Fear episode three, the debut of the Brigadier. How did you do that? So good though, so good, so good. What's next? Fury from the Deep by Victor Pemberton. Originally, it was the longest target book ever until the John Peel Trout and Dalek novels came along. Mm. Eight out of ten as well. Killer seaweed. Those uh, technical inspectors where they open their mouths and the gas comes out. And the debut of the Sonic Screwdriver. And Victoria Waterfield leaves, which is a shame because she was very good. But she was replaced by Zoe, who's almost as good, so don't really mind. At the end of season five now, we have The Wheel in Space. Hmm. The original concept is, it's not very well known, but the original concept was that it would be Daleks versus Cybermen, which would have been incredible, but then Terry Nation decided he didn't want to, to Doctor Who to have the Daleks again. So it became just a Cyberman story. With the updated suits, which do look better than the Moonbase and Tomb Cyberman suits, but they only did two of them, and they had rubbish voices. So what are you going to do? I'm going to have to give it a... Hmm... Four, five, no, five's too generous. Four out of ten. No, three out of ten. I really don't like it. Six episodes, too long. They thought people go, oh, but it's got the Cybermen in it. Yeah, but the Cybermen in it are rubbish. And you're not going to like the next one because I'm going to give the Dominators a six. Yeah, six out of ten. When the Dominators is getting higher score than the abominable snowman you know something's up but i love the quarks too much they're so cute and mm, it's probably too long even at five episodes ideally i think it should have been a three four parter it's still really good though even if the plot isn't very solid and the character designs are ridiculous like why do all the dulcians wear dresses well, not even dresses, like weird skirts. The Mind Robber, people like it. I don't. It's a bit weird. Very weird. Two out of ten. Enough said. The Invasion is incredible. Yeah, it's just all around amazing. I will give it an eight out of ten. It was basically a John Pertwee story, but they did it better than all the John Pertwee stories. Because it has, like, the Brigadier and Sergeant Benton in it, but... Before... See, if they... In the John Pertwee era, they'd had it, like, the Patrick Troughton era, but with unit stories just sprinkled in, it would have been great. But they made every story a unit story, so every story the Earth has to be invaded or a scientist has to go mad and unleash his weird invention on everyone. The Crotons... hate the Crotons. One, two, three. It's slightly better than the Mind Robber. Uh, the designs of the Crotons are pretty cool, but the plot is horrendous. And the version on Britbox, it, is we it has this weird yellow colour. I don't know what's happened to the film, but it's not great. The Seeds of Death. The Seeds of Death. What do I think of the Seeds of Death? Hmm. Nine out of ten. So good. So good. When the foam's like invading this park, it's great. 
And then the space pirates. Hmm. What do I think of the space pirates? I love the target novelization. I read it before I watched the story, so I thought it was great, but then I watched the story and was massively disappointed. Sorry, GWF, Doctor Who, but yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a four. And finally, we come to The War Games by Malcolm Hulk. And it was the debut of Uncle Terry, Terence Dix. Hmm, if he hadn't been involved in Doctor Who, then he wouldn't have penned all of the target novelizations. So we have The War Games to thank for that. And on the whole, it's very nice to watch. It's too long. I feel like with a lot of... Most stories over four parts are just too long. Like, I'm not saying that every story should necessarily be two part, four parts long, but they should have actually thought about which stories deserve to have six parts rather than just, you know, getting a four-part story and then padding it out to six parts. But this was ten parts. And, yeah, it's like captured, escape, captured, escape, captured, escape. But it's still good. Seven out of ten. That's what I think. Now that I've given my thoughts on every story, I just want to show you this. It's Doctor Who magazine number 265 from the 1990s, 1998 in fact, where they did like this, a poll of every Doctor Who story at the time, so all the classic ones, and then they showed their results. And the Genesis and Daleks won, obviously. They also did a poll of the new adventures and missing adventures, which is also quite interesting. But yeah, I just wanted to show that because I'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to compare it to the new one when that comes out. So yeah, thank you for watching. I know this has been a pretty long video, but I just thought I was gonna fill in the form anyway. I might as well make a video about it. Hope you enjoyed.